I recently published a video showing off fine prints that are public domain. There was a great comment in the comments section. Vladimir writes, I can never come up with ideas on how to use these old images. Few people like that comment, and another person wrote me either. I think that's a great comment, by the way, and I appreciate your honesty on that. In this video, I'm going to try to solve that issue. So I've got three tips on how I personally use old vintage illustrations and prints. Hopefully you'll find this helpful. Let's jump in. Okay, I'm going to use the actual site, the actual Library of Congress site that I was highlighting in the other video. So I'm just going to go here to this collection and view all. And then from here, I'm going to go to this gallery view. Right now I'm in grid. I'm going to go to gallery. That makes the pictures a bit bigger. And I'm also going to select larger image available anywhere. It's going to dramatically bring down my search results, but I still have 1700 that I can play with. So from here, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to see if I can find something that sort of strikes my fancy. So for example, this one here, the mandolin player, I'm going to pop this one open. We can see here, this is just basically a sketch, a nice looking sketch from the olden days. Okay, so I'm going to download this image. Now the improper way, the wrong way to do it is to just right click and click save image. What you want to do is go up here to the top and you can see there's a JPEG for 61 kilobytes, JPEG for 342 kilobytes, and a TIFF. I'm going to grab the JPEG because that's the larger file size, the JPEG one. And we can see here now when I pop this open, this is a relatively high quality scan. So now I'm going to click right click and save image. Okay, so this is not a technical walkthrough. I don't want you to get hung up if you're using Photoshop or Affinity Photo or Inkscape, whatever. This is more of a design tutorial. Here's my image that I've downloaded from the website. Now, I've got this on a disk plate template. So this is 2900 by 4060 pixels. I can make this larger. So I'm going to make this a bit larger here. And you can see it still looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove the background. So I'm going to go into Magic Eraser. It's going to rasterize this image. I've got my tolerance set very low to 25 because I don't want to remove anything other than just the white on the outside. I'm now going to take my eraser and I'm just going to make sure that around it is clean. And now I've got a baseline image that I can now use. So I'm going to make this a bit bigger. And then what I can do now is put a background in, in, be, in behind it. So here, for example, I've put a vintage piece of paper back there. I put my image on top. I'm going to actually get rid of the signature down below. So I'm just going to use my eraser tool and I'm going to get rid of that. And really, this would be it. So what you're doing is you're essentially cleaning up the image and putting a vintage background. You could put black, you put white, anything you like. But this would actually sell. The reason it would sell is because somebody somewhere just wants old timey art and they just want a beautiful sketch. And the simplicity is actually a selling feature. They don't want something loud. They don't want something complicated. Could be for an Airbnb, for example, something neutral. That's technique number one. Okay, so for technique number two, I've got a picture here. It's called the Capture of Carthage, and I'm going to click on it. And what I'm going to do is go into this About This Item. And when I click on that, I get to this screen, and it shows me more details about this picture. Shows me the title, shows me the creator, shows me when about it was made, date created was 1539. I care about this stuff here, the person who did it and the year it was published. And let's pop this open in Photoshop and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I've popped this image now into Photoshop. I've got it in landscape. And what I typically will do is just put in a different layer underneath it. In this case, I personally like black, but you could do white, you could do any color. Here you go. And I'm going to just keep it with the frame around it because the white is kind of clean. Although what you can do, here's a little bonus tip, I'm going to add another layer right above the black and I'm going to make it the same color as the white. I want to make it exact as possible. It's kind of a gray and I'm going to actually put in a rectangle right around it. So right about there and then I'm going to just make sure that this is all merged together. So I'm going to select all my rows, make sure they're all aligned both vertically and horizontally. Now here, what I'm going to do is move my artwork up a tiny bit. And I'm actually going to make this a tiny bit smaller. So I'm going to move it so it's about like that. And then from here, I'm actually going to use my text tool. And I've put the title now down below. You could also include the artist in the year. So here's an example where you would make a fine art print. You're essentially matting the photo with a black background. Someone would buy this as a, either a digital download or they could buy this as a physical art print. And even though it's not a super famous print, somebody somewhere like myself who really likes medieval artwork could hang this up in a bathroom, a workshop, a reading room. 
it's an original piece that you can't buy at the Target or the Walmart, and that's the appeal of it. Okay, let's switch it up here for the third technique. I typically look for a beautiful person, beautiful woman here, for example, fox woman. I'm going to click on this. There's even a cute little kitty down in the corner. So I'm going to pick this photograph here, and I'm going to pick the JPEG download. Okay, and I've got my Redbubble template open because we're going to make a t-shirt, and I'll go to File in Place. Okay, now for this one, I'm just going to make the image as large as possible here, but I'm actually not going to use the whole image. I'm going to add another layer in, and I'm going to make a circle. So there's my circle. I'm just going to put the circle over top. I'm actually going to make the circle a bit transparent so that I can see here. And then I'm going to make the image underneath bigger so that it fills the whole circle. I don't care about it filling the whole template, but I do care about it filling the sides of the circle. And I want to include both kitties there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm now going to take my image and put it over top of the circle, highlight both layers, and I'm going to click the Alt key and click the mouse button. That's going to create a circle. And I'm going to make sure that my opacity is 100%. And now I've got a circle. I'm going to put a background just so you can see this a bit better. Imagine this, for example, on a black t-shirt. I would not include the black, but you can get an idea here. It's round. It's got Asian artwork. It's got cats on it. There's all sorts of keywords here that would be wonderful for someone who enjoys t-shirts of this design. I really hope you found this walkthrough helpful. There's all sorts of designs on these public domain websites and using these techniques, they're quick, they're easy, and most of all, they're effective. I actually do make sales with fine art prints and with t-shirts using these techniques. And I hope you do too. Thanks a lot for watching everybody.